Good morning, church. Good morning. Good morning and welcome to Crow River Lutheran Church. My name, my name you might be wondering, is Pastor Matthew and I'm so glad, so glad you are here. Today is a special day because we have the first Sunday in Advent, so Livy Sisniak will be lighting our first Advent candle. Oh, isn't that nice? I hope your Thanksgiving was wonderful. I hope it was uh, chaos-free, and hopefully you were sort of nice to each other, and I hope your stomachs were full, and you've awakened from your food comas. Welcome. Welcome also to those of you who are joining us by way of our live stream. Thank you for coming to Crow River today. I have a number of announcements for you this morning. A number of announcements. Uh, we will add Marilyn Gerhardson and Eugene Jensen to our prayer list. Marilyn and Eugene to our prayer list. Also, there's a mistake in the bulletin, in the announcements. I'm told that at 6.30 p.m., Crow River Walka Christmas potluck. So 6.30 p.m. on Wednesday of this week. Crow River Walka is having their potluck, and I, I assume it's going to be here. Yes. It is here. So please come to that. Also, if you're looking forward to Christmas, which I am, we're preparing the way for the baby Jesus already, so let's just talk about that. At 3 p.m., sorry, at 5 p.m., you guys will have your Christmas Eve candlelight service. 5 p.m. on Christmas Eve, there will be no service on Christmas Day. And um, if you're in the mood to decorate, because I know how much you guys love to decorate. We got some laughter up here. That was a joke. I don't know if you like to decorate or not. I don't do much in the way of decorating. We will decorate the church for Christmas next Saturday, December 4th at 1 p.m. All people are welcome to hum, come and help. And the principle is hum. I said hum. Come. God, you guys. Oh, man. You guys have an interesting way of showing your love around here. That's to give one another a hard time. I feel tremendously loved. Thank you. So please come next Saturday, December 4th at 1 p.m. to set up uh, decorating for Christmas. All people are welcome to come. And uh, all people are qualified, too. So don't think you're not. The principle is, many hands make light work, so please come. We had a really joyful celebration last Wednesday evening, um, our Christmas Eve, Wednesday Eve, Chris, or Thanksgiving Eve, ugh, Christmas, Thanksgiving. That was fun. Uh, it went really well, and thank you to those of you who came and helped out for that as well. That was a great success. Have I missed any announcements that I forgot to announce? Well, if I didn't forget any other, other announcements, if there are no additional announcements, please stand as you are able as we confess our sins in the presence of God and one another. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who forgives all our sin, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your Spirit, so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. 
By grace you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit, that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. Our opening hymn is for the fruit of all creation, number 679. Thanks be to God for these gifts to every nation. Thanks be to God for the plowing, sowing, reaping, silent growth while we are sleeping, future needs in earth safe keeping. Thanks be to God. In the just reward of labor, God's will is done. In the help we give our neighbor, God's will is done. For the task of caring for the hungry and despairing, in the harvests we are sharing, God's will is done. For the harvests of the Spirit, thanks be to God. For the good we all inherit, thanks be to God. For the good we for the truths that still confound us. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and also with you. Please pray with me. Stir up your power, Lord Christ, and come. By your merciful protection, alert us to the threatening dangers of our sins and redeem us for your life of justice. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. We sing, Give Me Jesus, number 770. Afterwards, we will light the Advent candle. Give me Jesus. Give 
time we invite forward our reader or sorry we're gonna light the advent candle I forgot already Libby come on up here give a round of applause for Libby and the readers can come up here too since we're all family right all of you are related in some way shape or form some by marriage some not by marriage Now, as we light our first Advent candle, please pray with me. We praise you, O God, for this evergreen crown that marks our days of preparation for Christ's Advent. As we light the first candle on this wreath, rouse us from sleep, that we may be ready to greet our Lord when he comes with all the saints and angels. Enlighten us with your grace and prepare our hearts to welcome him with joy. Grant this through Christ our Lord, whose coming is certain and whose day draws near. Amen. Thank you, Livy. And now we invite forward our reader. She's already here. Look at that. The first scripture reading is from Jeremiah 33, 14 through 16. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will fulfill the promise I have I made to the house of Israel and the house of Judah. In these days and at that time, I will cause a righteousness branch to spring up for David, and he shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. In those days, Judah will be saved, and Jerusalem will live in safety. And this is the name by which I, it will be called. The Lord is our righteousness, word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The responsive psalm reading is Psalm 25. Please read the bold print. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. Do not let those who wait for you, to, you be put to shame. Let them be ashamed who are wantonly treacherous. Lead me in your truth and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation, for you I want all day long. Do not remember the sins of my youth are my transgressions. According to your steadfast love, love, remember me for your goodness sake, O Lord. Lord 
He leads the humble in what is right and teaches the humble his way. The second scripture reading is 1 Thess- Thessalonians 3, 9 through 13. How can we thank God enough for you in return for all the joy that we feel before our God because of you? Night and day we pray most earnestly that we may see your face to face and restore whatever is lacking in your faith. Now may our God and Father himself and our Lord Jesus direct our way to you. And may the Lord make you increase and abound in love for one another and for all, just as we abound in love for you. And may he so strengthen your hearts in holiness that you may be blameless before our God and Father at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ with all his saints. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. All right, kids, it's time for the children's sermon. Bring it on up here. You can do this the easy way, or you can do it the hard way. You make the choice. Detloff, I see you up there, buddy. What are you going to do? We're going to wait for you, buddy. Just because you're sitting up there doesn't mean I don't want you down here. Like I said, easy way or hard way, you choose. Which way? Still waiting, Detloff kids. Still waiting. I got all day. You can't outweigh me. Outweigh me. I'm, I'm good at awkward silences. What's wrong with them kids up there? Yeah. What's up, kids? How you doing? Good. I'm glad. Did you eat lots of turkey? No. You didn't eat turkey? <laughs> What's wrong with you? I told these good folks, if you didn't eat enough to make your stomach hurt, you didn't eat enough. It was much funnier on Wednesday when I said it. <laughs> We're making preparations coming up here. What are we making preparations for? Jesus, Jesus, Christmas. We're making preparations for Christmas. Um, We're making lots of preparations. What do you guys do to prepare for Christmas at your house? Decorate, yeah? What do you do for decorations? You put up Christmas lights or what? Put up a Christmas tree? Ornaments? All that good stuff? Do you hang your stocking? Cool. Yeah, all those things are for preparations for the coming of Jesus. Because the Bible tells us, right? Prepare the way of the Lord. So we make preparations. It also says prepare the way of the Lord and then it says this. It says make his paths straight. Now I think that we make preparations and it makes us feel good inside and happy inside. But I don't necessarily know if we need to make those preparations. I think that regardless of if we make those preparations or not, that Jesus is going to come. And I think that's the good news of Christmas. No matter what we do or don't do, Jesus promises to come be with us and for us, to love us, to care for us, to show his compassion unto us, aside from what we do or don't do. That's good news. So if Jesus' paths are going to be straight... Regardless of what we do or don't do, the preparations that we make or lack thereof, what do you think the Bible means then by make his path straight? Any ideas? No No ideas? Come on! 
Well, I think it refers to our service to others. I think there are several people in our community that aren't as fortunate as us whose paths aren't exactly straight. They have certain obstacles in front of them, hardships and challenges that stand in their way of experiencing the love of Christ and the mercy of Christ in the way that we, who don't have difficulties, do. So to prepare the way of the Lord, I think means to love and serve people who are in need this Christmas season. I think if we, th- we think of the Christmas season as a season of receiving, but we might think of it more after we receive as a season of giving, so that those who do not have straight paths might experience a straight path to Jesus and, and his love and mercy and compassion. God works through us. He uses our hands and our feet, our time, our talents, and our resources so that people in need might experience his love and mercy. So as you're thinking about all the things that you want for Christmas this year, hoping that you might receive those things in abundance, think about ways in which you might reach out to other people. Get alongside them care for them, help heal them, and give away what you have so that they might too experience just a smidgen of what the birth of Jesus means for the world. All right, please pray with me. Repeat after me. Good and gracious God, Make our paths straight. Make our paths straight. So, straight, so straight. So that we might be free. So free. free to use our freedom. Free to, use our freedom. to make the paths of others straight. straight. Help us to be servants. To, be servants. to use our time and our talents. Our and our resources in service to you. May the time of Advent be a time of preparation. May we be free of hardships. And those who are having hardships, may you be with them. And all God's children said, Amen. Amen. All right, you can go back to your seat now and the debt lofts. I'm going to have a word with you after the church. (laughs) Darn kids. Please stand as you're able for the gospel acclamation. Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Alleluia. The Holy Gospel for this first Sunday of Advent comes to us from the Holy Gospel according to Luke, the 21st chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. There will be signs in the sun, the moon and the stars, and on the earth distress among nations, confused by the roaring of the sea and the waves. People will faint from fear and foreboding of what is coming upon the world, for the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with powers and great glory. Now when these things begin to take place, stand up and raise your heads, because your redemption is drawing near. Then he told them a parable. Look at the fig tree and all the trees. As soon as they sprout leaves, you can see for yourselves and know that summer is already near. So also, when you see these things taking place, you know that the kingdom of God is near. Truly, I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all the things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, 
but my words will not pass away. Be on guard so that your hearts are not weighed down with the dissipation and drunkenness and the worries of this life. And that day catch you unexpectedly, like a trap. For it will come upon all who live on the face of the whole earth. Be alert at all times, praying that you may have the strength to escape all these things that will take place, and to stand before the Son of Man. This is the Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Today marks the first Sunday of Advent. So when I sat down to write my sermon for today, I found myself revisiting precious memories of past Christmas seasons. I remember decorating the tree with Grandma and eating popcorn while we strung Christmas tree garlands. We often didn't get a whole lot accomplished, but we were fully content to be inside, out of the cold, enjoying each other's company while Grandpa dozed in the easy chair. I remember shopping for Christmas presents and wrapping them up with a feeling of joy and satisfaction, knowing that I bought just the perfect gift. I remember when our dog Annie somehow got into the Christmas ham forcing an emergency visit to the local vet, who greeted us with his trademark smile and calm demeanor, even though all of us were panicked. I remember touring the community for one day with the high school chamber choir, making stops at schools, hospitals, and local businesses to sing about figgy pudding and all other things Christmas. But one of my favorite Christmas traditions is setting the table and watching Hallmark movies with my mom. Yes, I admit I like those cheesy Hallmark movies for their ability to make me feel good inside. I also remember the time when my friends and I came up with a brilliant idea that we would have an eggnog chugging contest. It was such a smashing success that we continued the tradition year after year. But I also started thinking about a conversation that I had recently. One day I had a friend give me the look. You know, the look. And he said, you know, Advent, that's a weird thing for you Christians to be thinking about, right? Advent, you're going to wait for a baby that has already come? That you already profess came and rose from the grave? And yet all of you run around during Advent pretending like you don't know that Jesus is going to come. And I said, yeah, I guess you're right. That does seem kind of weird. But really what Advent is is something completely different. It is acknowledging this time and space where God finds us again and again in the darkness, yesterday, today, and forever. Advent is a time where we Christians remember the promises of God fulfilled through Christ and remind ourselves of what that means for our lives. So I want to get a little bit weird for a moment, if I may. More weird than I normally am, I suppose. Are there any sci-fi fans in the room that would admit it publicly? There's two sci-fi fans in the room. Come on, people. I bet there's more than two sci-fi fans in the room. If you like Star Wars, you like sci-fi, okay? The reason I ask is because I want to make the assertion that in essence we as Christians are time travelers. We are time travelers because in the story of Jesus Christ we have seen the future. 
Because Jesus has come and conquered death, we have conquered death. We have seen the future and indeed have been given a promise that we can already see. Wherever we encounter the darkness and oppression of broken lives, wherever we encounter a place of faithlessness, we can say we know the future because we know of Jesus. And somehow our future is already granted. There is a powerful prophetic gift that all of us have because our death has already happened. It happened in the waters of baptism and it happened on the cross with Jesus. Sin and death are no more and in Jesus Christ the future is granted today. So if you could go back in time and tell yourself one thing that would change your world, what would you go back and say to yourself? I would go back to when I was 18 and getting my first credit card. And I would explain to myself something called interest rates. <laughs> I would explain to myself the power of compounding interest with $100, what that could look like in just a few years supposed to be funny, people. <laughs> the point I'm trying to make is the best indication of our future is what we know about our past. That God has been faithful to every promise that God has made. All over the biblical story, we find that there is a God who loves us and finds us in those dark places and lovingly moves us out into a new place and a new way of being and into a new reality. So I won't stand here and tell you that you will never again, you will never again experience darkness and despair. That's just not true. But the promises given to us in Jesus Christ are over and above the realities of darkness that we experience. We are time travelers, travelers because no longer are we bound by sin and death, space and time. So the verse that I want to focus on today, with all that being said, is when Jesus says this to us and his disciples. He says, be on your guard so that your hearts are not weighed down by the worries of this life. These words by Jesus are a reminder of the promise that we already know that good things are coming to us in the future. And since we know that God keeps the promises that God makes, we can start living by that promise today. Brothers and sisters, in Advent, we don't pretend that we don't already know what happens. In Advent, we find it important to remember our roots and remind ourselves of what the promise of Jesus' birth means for our lives. So folks, I ask that today and every day that you will engage your inner time traveler. Let the announcement of the Lord that saves take you out of the darkness and into the light. The Lord God sent Christ into the world to take up sin and death and secure for us eternal life. That promise is a promise that cannot be broken. I also want to challenge you to take the light of Christ into the world, which I suppose is what I was alluding to in the children's sermon. Take the promise of Christ's redeeming love into the world and share it with those who need it the most. 
tell them of God's love in Christ that unbinds us from sin and death and allows us to live into the promised future here and now. We know the rest of the story, folks. And so my prayer is that this Advent is a new opportunity to start fresh and take advantage of the most wonderful Christmas gift that you will ever receive, the peace of Christ. Let us no longer be weighed down by the worries of this world. Instead, let us live out of the truth and promise of Jesus Christ now and forever. Amen. Our hymn is O Come, O Come, Emmanuel, number 257, verses 1 through 4. You'll find the words on the screen or in your hymnal. Couldn't quite get the high note on that one. At this time, I invite you to stand as you are able as we confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord. 
who is conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. As we pray for the church, the world, and all those in need, please respond to each petition with the words, Hear our prayer. God, in the season of watching and waiting, let us pray for all people and places that yearn for God's presence. God, you are the God of peace. Strengthen your church around the globe to proclaim the message of your love coming to the world. Open our hearts to recognize your face in all people and in all of creation. Lord, in your mercy. God of mighty redwoods and plants and fields and forests, wind and waves, be a healing balm to our wounded planet. May we nurture what you have lovingly created. Lord, in your mercy. God of equity and compassion, bring righteousness and goodness to all the peoples of the earth. Give a heart of discernment and integrity to our leaders in our communities. And God, if our paths aren't straight, make them straight. When our paths are straight, God, help us to be courageous enough and loving enough to be your servants in making the paths of others to Jesus straight by service and giving, love and mercy. And may all people in this Christmas season experience your love and compassion. Lord, in your mercy. God of comfort and care, be present to all those who watch and wait. Come to all who await births, deaths, new jobs, retirements, healings, and life transitions. God, we pray for the healing of those across the globe who are sick or suffering, who are facing hardship. We pray for all the people in our community facing these things as well. God, we know that they need your healing. And God, we know that you can heal them. We pray especially for the following people. Marilyn, Eugene, Don, Donna, Vicky, Rudin, Marlin, Carol, John, Sig, Ed, Duane, Deanna, Joanna, Randy, Janet, Kalman, and all those we name before you either in our hearts or aloud. Lord, in your mercy. God of companionship and community, we give you thanks for the saints who journeyed with us and now abide in you. Even in distress and uncertainty, make us confident that your promises endure forever. Lord, in your mercy. God of new life, you come among us in the places we least expect. Receive these prayers and those of our hearts in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Please share a gesture of God's peace with all those around you. Peace. 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 And I know you know that on the newsletter Good. Yeah, yeah. Don't don't worry about it. Hi, peace be with you. Isn't church fun? We get to hang out with our friends, the boys, the boys, girls, boys. Hi, how are you? 
And then some of you get uncomfortable and sit down early because you're all scared about what if I share the peace for too long? Hi, peace. Peace. I can't help myself. I'm going to keep passing the peace for a few more seconds. Hi, peace be with you. 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 We will now receive our tithes and offering. The children can bring those offerings forward. We don't pass plates anymore, um, but we do leave an offering plate right outside the church sanctuary in the narthex. That's what Lutherans call a lobby. Man, you guys make me feel really funny. We do that because of COVID. I understand I wasn't here when you started doing that, but um, it bears repeating that without your generosity and giving, none of this would be possible. None of this. For 150 years, this place has not only survived, but thrived. And so, if we put our heads together and our minds together and our hearts together and we rely upon the grace and mercy of Jesus and we put our money together as well, I know that we can make this place a thriving place for another 150 years. What do you say? Boy, I didn't expect a round of applause. Wow. I'm blushing. <laughs> Thanks be to God. We will now sing our offertory hymn, offering hymn, which is We Are an Offering, number 692. Voices. We lift our hands, we lift our lives up to you, we are an offering. Lord, use our voices, Lord, use our hands, Lord, use our lives, they are yours, we are an offering. All that we have, all that we are, all that we hope to be, we give to you, we give to you. We lift our voices, we lift our hands, we lift our lives up to you. We are an offering, we are an offering. Please pray, pray with me our offertory prayer. God of our waiting and watching, we offer the gifts of our hearts and our lives to the service of all your people. Prepare the way before us as we meet you in this simple meal. Through Christ Jesus, our pathway and our peace. Amen. Now let us Pray the prayer that our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The God of our hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing, so that we may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit through Christ Jesus for whom we wait. Amen. Our sending hymn is Prepare the Royal Highway number 264. Prepare 
the royal highway, the King of kings is near. Let every trail and valley a level road appear. Then greet the King of glory, foretold in sacred story. Hosanna to the Lord, for he fulfills God's word. God's people see him coming, your own eternal King. Palm branches strew before him, spread garments, shout and sing. God's promise will not fail you, no more shall doubt assail you. Hosanna to the Lord, for he fulfills God's word. Christ is near. Thanks be to God.